everybody, I'm Roberta. Welcome to my home. It's December and the holidays are in full swing. And if you're like many of us, the month is filled with celebrations and parties. So today's segment is all about planning a holiday party in your home with wonderful recipes that are elegant but easy. And a lot of these dishes are perfect to bring to someone's home if you're not hosting the party but enjoying it at somebody else's house. So let's get started. First thing I think about in December is eggnog. So today I'm going to share with you a great recipe for a rich, creamy eggnog that is perfect as a holiday drink at your next gathering. In my mixer, fitted with a whisk attachment, I have egg yolks and sugar that have just been whipped for five to seven minutes so that they're light, fluffy, and tripled in volume. You know they're ready because they turn a very pale yellow. Now to this, I'm gonna ladle in some hot milk that was just about scalded. You just wanna add a little bit of milk at a time because you wanna temper your eggs. If I were to pour all of this milk into that, uh, what would happen is you'd end up with cooked eggs, almost like scrambled eggs. So you really want to be careful. Here we go. I just want to give it a quick little whisk. Incorporate it. That's going to warm the egg mixture up. And then I'm going to be able to pour the rest of the hot milk into the eggs without turning it into scrambled eggs. Great. So now that mixture is done. And now we want to strain this mixture just so that any bits of egg get taken out and we have a perfectly smooth eggnog. So I'm going to pour this through. Mm, it smells so good. Just get this. And see right there, you just have a little bit of the yolks that you just need to strain out. Now we have a perfectly smooth cream. And to that, I'm going to add the rest of my hot milk. This is such a simple thing to do. I, I think that a lot of people feel that eggnog is hard, time consuming to make, and so they turn to the grocery store to buy some. But you know, it is very, very easy. And you know what I love best is with any remaining eggnog that I have, I make an eggnog flavored cheesecake, which is perfect for the holidays. Okay. So my milk is in my bowl. I'm just gonna give it another quick stir. And now I'm gonna set my bowl on top of a cool water bath, which is just ice cubes in water. And this needs to come to a cool temperature before we finish it. And all we have to do to finish it is add a little bit of heavy cream and the, whoops, and the alcohol of choice. Now a lot of people do rum, a lot of people do whiskey. I like Grand Marnier. I love that hint of orange in the background of my eggnog. And it pairs beautifully with a little bit of shaved nutmeg on top. So we're gonna set this aside, let it cool, and we're gonna go on to our next party drink, a great, pomegranate cocktail that really says happy holidays. Be right back. So whenever I have a party, I always serve red and white wine, but I also like to have a signature cocktail. And what I'm gonna show you now is this year's signature cocktail in my house. It's so delicious. Very, very simple to make. I have pomegranate tart cherry juice. And it may sound a little different, but it's really easy to find. I found this in Stop and Shop in the produce aisle. So we start out with our pomegranate tart cherry juice. And then we add some vodka. And remember, you're gonna get the exact measurements of this when you download the recipes. And then some Grand Marnier. It just gives it a really warm taste and just those subtle notes of the orange with the pomegranate and the cherry really marries beautifully. And then to finish it off, club soda. 
to add that little bit of sparkling fizz. Now you notice I don't have any ice in this pitcher because what I would normally do is make a batch up ahead of time or several batches and chill it. I don't want ice to dilute the alcohol in this. So it's completely made. All I have to do is chill it and then you can serve it over ice or as I have right now, a lovely chilled martini glass. And I'm just gonna give it a little taste. It's such a beautiful color too. And you know, you can even float a mint sprig on top, which would be great and it just adds just a hint of flavor. Mm, it is delicious. I think your guests are really gonna enjoy this cocktail. It might be your signature cocktail this holiday season. Okay, up next, can't have a holiday party without wonderful hors d'oeuvres. I'm gonna show you my wonderfully tasty, easy tenderloin on crostini with arugula and horseradish sauce. We'll be right back. One of my favorite hors d'oeuvres to put on a holiday party menu is this great tenderloin on crostini with arugula and horseradish sauce. One of the reasons it's such a great party dish is because it can be eaten at room temperature. It can be assembled ahead of time. Again, freeing you up when your guests arrive. So I have a gorgeous tenderloin that I got right at Stop and Shop and my butcher trimmed it and tied it for me. It really is a lovely piece of meat. And I simply am generous with the olive oil. That's key to adding flavor and moisture to so many meats when you're roasting them. I use this same exact method when I'm making a prime rib. A lot of olive oil, simply massage it into the meat, and then generous amounts of kosher salt. Because I want the salt to form a crust so that when this cooks, and it starts to caramelize, that salt gets all golden brown and when you bite into it, it adds so much flavor to your meat. You don't need a lot of spices on meat. This is all you need. And then some pepper. And again, be generous with the pepper. If you want to make this an au poivre, you could take black peppercorns, grind them up and, and sprinkle them on the meat and you would have a, a more peppery flavored au poivre type of filet. That's all there is to this. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes and then turn it down and slow roast it. For medium rare, which is how I like to serve it, I like it a little bit on the pink side, really 15 minutes per pound in your oven. But again, remember, I'm gonna give you all these details in the planning notes and recipes when you download. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and when we come back, I'm gonna to talk to you about the crostini and show you how to assemble the whole dish. Be right back. Our meat is cooked to perfection. I let it rest for 20 minutes, and you can see that I have sliced it. You know, I wanna tell you that if you don't wanna serve it on crostini, this is beautiful for a buffet. Served just as it is on a beautiful board, sliced thin, maybe with some rolls to accompany it. And now I'm gonna show you a sauce that pairs perfectly with this meat. So I have some mayonnaise, and always use the best quality mayonnaise you can find. And to that, I'm gonna add some sour cream. And to that, just some simple prepared horseradish that you find right in the dairy aisle at your local supermarket. I'm gonna mix this up. Now I'm not going to add any salt to this. And the reason is my crostinis are already salted. I've used garlic salt and I've used it liberally. So we're gonna get between the meat and the crostini enough salt. That I'm not gonna add more salt to the sauce. That is all mixed. Really simple, again, do it ahead, cover it, can be made 24 to 48 hours in advance. And now we're gonna plate. You may remember in my earlier shows this summer, I showed you the method to making crostini. And it's very, very simple, just take bread, day old even works best, slice it thin, be liberal with olive oil, I like to use garlic salt, toast them in the oven under the broiler. Only takes a few minutes, watch them carefully. And now, take a piece of meat. This meat looks great. And this is a very hearty hors d'oeuvre. 
So you know, you have a few hearty hors d'oeuvres at a party, and if it's just a cocktail party and you're not planning on serving dinner, this is perfect because when you're drinking alcohol, you want your guests to have some solid, you know, hearty food without it being a full dinner. And this is one of those perfect things at any party. I'm gonna put a dollop of the horseradish sauce. And then, for color and for crunch, and a little peppery flavor. I'm gonna add some arugula. And I'm just gonna continue making these up and when I come back, our next hors d'oeuvre is retro. We're gonna make a holiday cheese ball. See you soon. So our next hors d'oeuvre is a bit retro. We're gonna make a cheese ball. I think of cheese balls as kind of being festive and I have to tell you, it's one of my husband's favorite things. Really simple. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with some softened cream cheese. And by softened, I mean it's sat out for six to eight hours to come down to room temperature. Put it in the bowl of my mixer. And with that, some unsalted butter. Again, down to room temperature so that it's nice and soft and can incorporate nicely. And to that, shredded cheddar cheese. And then, Major Gray's Chutney. Now, Major Gray's Chutney might not be familiar to all of you, but it's very common and it's found in all the grocery stores and it's kept with the Worcestershire sauce and steak sauces. And here it is, this is what it looks like. And a little bit of this. And this kind of acts as your binder for this cheese ball. Worcestershire sauce. and a little bit of lemon juice. That's all there is to this, it's so easy. So now with my mixer and a paddle attachment, I'm gonna whip it all together, and then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to form it into in, the ball shape just by using plastic wrap. So our cheese mixture is completely incorporated. we're gonna just pour it out onto a baking sheet that has been lined with saran wrap. And you wanna make sure your pieces are generous because this is where you actually form the cheese into the ball shape. And don't, don't get nervous, it's gonna be soft but it's very, very easy to mold, very easy to work with. It smells good. Okay. So now, I'm gonna use the wax paper to literally mold this. It's really very easy. And again, any imperfections in your cheese ball from the saran wrap is gonna be covered because we're gonna roll it in dried cranberries. So it's gonna look beautiful. So now I've covered it completely in my saran wrap and with your hands, you just go around, press it into a dome shape. That's all you do. Put it in the refrigerator and chill it for four to 24 hours. So again, make this in advance. Okay, now I already have one that's been done. So here it is, ready for the party. And I've got some dried cranberries that I just ran through the food processor to chop up. And now what I've done is I placed my cheese ball directly onto my serving platter and just put strips of wax paper around the platter. That way when I'm done, topping it with all the cranberries, I can just lift the wax paper sheets out and my serving platter is still clean. And you just wanna press the cranberries into the cheese mixture. And you wanna do this shortly before serving or do it in advance, put it in the fridge well covered, but take it out for at least an hour because you don't want the cranberries to be hard. 
And there you have it. Now gently remove the wax paper. And this is beautiful with some crackers put around and everybody can help themselves. And you made it yourself. So it's something to talk about. All right, when I come back, we're putting everything we've made today out. We are ready for our party. We're ready for a party. I wanted to show you how I would set up for my holiday party. We've got our beautiful eggnog. And in these glasses, I finish the eggnog off with adding my heavy cream, Grand Marnier, and topping it off with some grated nutmeg. Of course, for the children, there's a non-alcoholic version available. And then we've got our holiday cocktail. And I love having my cocktails on a silver tray. And then as guests come in, I greet them with the tray in my hand so they can take a cocktail and it just starts the mood off in a very festive way. And then for our beautiful hors d'oeuvres. Our crostini that I showed you made, did double duty. I topped these crostini off with cherry tomatoes that I sauteed with olive oil and garlic, just garnished with some basil and Parmesan cheese. These are, again, a great thing to have on a buffet and they can be made in advance because the crostini stays crisp. Our cranberry encrusted cheese ball, our tenderloin on arugula, and then I've also made these cute little puff pastry purses that are just filled with leeks, shallots, and olives. They're delicious. I think we have all the makings for a terrific holiday party and I hope that I've inspired you to have a wonderful party in your home. I can feel the fire is crackling. It's all warm and toasty in here. The mood is set. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, anytime you've got friends and family gathered, you have an elegant occasion. I'll see you next week with more wonderful holiday recipes. See you soon.